Now to absorb some local color through the magic of AM radio. Harkens me back to my youthful, careful days on the playgrounds of Forest Park School and my gifted days. And, and what, oh, you're gifted, all right. <laughs> what were you gifted at? Well, I guess there were, I had some issues. Detention? There. Yeah. <laughs> when my dad told me I wouldn't plan on going to Harvard anytime real soon. <laughs> uh, you're going to have to get in touch with me. Uh, we're going to we're going to link all the volunteers via satellite cell phone so that we can put out the message immediately because you remember the problem we had in January. We had to have Governor Walker come in with the National Guard. It was horrible. Steve, listen to me. <laughs> Bring your own microphone because <laughs> you lost yeah. this one. Okay, Captain Ron, you've been doing this so well for the last few weeks. Uh, so go ahead and make my day. Oh, great one with the magic <laughs> pen. Oh, boy, he wants that microphone forever, doesn't he? Oh. Now you got to visualize this. We put a statue of Pete on this. Put him in wearing like a hard hat and a flannel shirt, tool belt, snow shovel. You, know? you mean like from the village people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A couple. Now wait a minute yeah. here. Good morning, Kenosha. This is Uncle Scotty Barter, and welcome to the Kenosha Today Weekend Report. Coming to you live from Studio A here at WIP AM 1050 on your radio dial. Streaming across the cold and damp cornfields of the corn Midwest. Reaching out to over 50,000 homes here in the Tri-County area. Little Stevie Casey is away on assignment this morning. However, the good news... Uh, also joining us, our video coordinator, soon to be named uh, this year's Kenosha Trolley Driver of the Year. It's pretty much a done deal. Uh, Captain Ron, Ronnie Muttersbuck is with us here at Camp Happy Face this morning. Ron, welcome. Good morning, everyone. And uh, engineering the Kenosha State train wreck, as always, uh, after staying up all last night, being on standby uh, to bring aid and residents to the aid of the uh, residents of the 17th District. Due to the possibility of snow flurries coming up here this week, uh, a Kenosha, a former Kenosha trolley driver, and six-time WAP LIP <laughs> Employee of the Month, the reigning fox catcher out in the 17th District, and thanks to his unprecedented heroic actions for getting 104th Avenue resurfaced, Pistol Pete Surgeon joins our encounter group this morning. Peter Wakeham, welcome. Ah, uh, good Peace morning. Day. By the way, I was driving uh, on 104th Avenue the other day, and it, I got a bring this to your attention. Mm-hmm. It's littered with leaves. There was at least five leaves. Hang on, the 104th Avenue <laughs> alarm is going off here. Wait a minute. And, see, you okay. hear it? Uh-oh. Oh, oh, we, oh, we gotta go! <laughs> Shut her down. Shut her down. Have a good show, everybody. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Jesus. I counted five leaves and two big things of roadkill. Now, uh, you're going to go from get her done to slacker or something. What do you got to say for yourself? <clears throat> I've actually been thinking of some ideas on how to solve this problem okay. since it was brought to my attention. And I think yes. I have a solution okay. that will help the entire community. Okay. Oh, you want it now? Oh, well, well, yeah. <laughs> well geez, you build up the act. <laughs> we, we, you put in the, the coils out So there. you said there's leaves and I, at roadkill. Is that my understanding yes, yes. of what's going on out there? Yeah. I suggested you fry up the roadkill on the fallen leaves and you feed it to people who may be, uh, you know, in uh, needy circumstances. Oh, just leave it right there. Yeah, just leave it like right a, there. We got the heating coils like underneath. A, like a drive through Yeah, Like for a sure. drive or, or, It oh. can be a neighborhood activity for the 17th. Boy, we got to think outside <laughs> the box. That's wow. what uh, speaking of the uh, 17th, there was a letter written by their alderman, David Bagdala, this week. A letter a, uh, into the voice of the people. And uh, he was a little miffed at a guy named Sam Martin, who uh, apparently was Mr. Uh, the mayor's uh, campaign manager. And uh, he says you got to call the same for both teams, and and a lot can be, and the same could be said for politics. Isn't the voice of the people an opinion? I mean, you don't have to have facts, right? Do you? No, I've read many of voice of the people where this, the, you're not even engaged with reality. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> welcome to the Saturday morning <laughs> right. Kenosha Today Show. Right, exactly. So. He says the hypocrisy gets worse. He says, should I abstain from voting uh, to fix a road in my district, or should I abstain from whatever? We've already done that. You can abstain from voting because we're, we're already on top of that. I mean, and he goes and he says, I would hope if you're going to be an advocate that we need budget hawks, which I think we do, then Mr. Martin call it the same both ways. I mean, that sounds like a, a cry for, for help. Has he wrote and, a voice to the people letter? Yeah, I don't know. Well, he signed his name to it. I don't know. If well, I meant, what did uh, Mr. Martin, did he write a vo- voice to the people? He what must have he had doing? one sometime okay. back. Uh, but uh, anyway, so this is, sounds like a cry for help. And so I went to uh, the archives <laughs> and I found this. This was the... Uh, Cry for help from the 17 districts out in, out there. Um, I don't think I have it ready, Scott. <laughs> 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 I was too busy fixing the roadkill. Okay, do you I have, do. Okay. I'm sorry. Hang right. on, I will right. find here's, it for you real sh- quick. Here's the. Uh, what is this? This is the cry for help. From this the is residents. the cry for help from the. Uh, we have our microphone adjusted now. Okay. See. 
The snow was interfering with our <laughs> signal from the 17th. <laughs> yeah, we couldn't right. get it on immediately. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, think, I think we got a phone call here, Pete. Oh, do we? Oh, really? We don't uh, anymore. Yeah. Good morning. Yeah. You're on Kenosha oh, today. No, they're gone. Uh, oh, they're gone. Yeah, we tried. Boy, we're trying. Well, anyway. Um, got to stay tuned for the comedy, yeah. America. We'll so, get to you. So here, to, it's to, ringing now. Okay. It's ringing now. The, 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 the uh, connection's back, right? Uh, yes, of You course. fed the squirrels out there on the treadmill? I, I did. Okay. Good morning. You're on Kenosha today. Good morning, guys. Oh, good morning, Shirley. <laughs> I'm at the senior fair. I'm, I'm in the senior craft fair. That's where I am calling from today. Senior craft fair? <laughs> from the craft oh, fair. Oh, craft. 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 I'm sorry. There's this <laughs> bad connection we're getting. <laughs> so, uh, you know, every Saturday morning, and we appreciate you calling, but uh, you always tell us what a good time you had at this uh, on Friday nights at Lighten Up with Larry. What's his name? Larry, yeah, Larry. You got uh, yeah. TG's it was. Oh my yeah, God. Okay, okay, but, uh, they got another person in there was so jammed. Shirley, <laughs> we have a new rule here. It's an FCC what? regulation. You can't be calling here every Saturday morning and telling us how much fun you had at these other <laughs> other guys' thing. And here's what the M's FCC has informed us to tell you. You know talking about you makes me smile. But every once in a while, I want to talk, talk about, about me. me. <laughs> I want to talk about number one, oh my, me, my, what I think, what I like, what I know, what I want, what I see. I like talking about you, 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 usually. But occasionally, I, I want to talk, talk about, about me. <laughs> you get my drift? Well, there's only one more, more week to go, so then, you, then I won't do it. <laughs> we'll come up with a song. I, did I tell everybody to come to 2717 67th Street to my craft fair? Oh, sure. Okay, what, what's 2717? That, that's uh, off of Roosevelt Road. That's the senior yeah, center, and, Scott. And oh, the senior center. You should know all about that. Oh, I got it. Gotta... And everything, and oh my gosh, and they got a bake sale, mm. and it's really mm. great. Are you signing 8 by 10 glossies of yourself? Pardon? Are you signing autographs? Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I met quite a few people that knew me from the radio. Oh, well, you're a big hit. Really we love funny. you calling in. So uh, remember, you got to talk about something else other than uh, lighting it up with Larry. From now okay, on. I right. promise. Have a good Only one week to go so that I won't, <laughs> that I won't be <laughs> so able to we're talk back about by it. De- we're back by default, Pete. <laughs> 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 one of my favorite um, words in the English language. Yeah, default. <laughs> All right, baby. Have a good weekend. All right. Thank you. <laughs> now. Here was, uh, we were talking about uh, the Alderman of 17th District and a cry for help. Now, this I went and got from the city's uh, minutes from the um, uh, License and Permit Committee. And uh, the Alderman from the 17th and the Alderman from the 4th, Mr. Rufflow, are assigned to the License and Permit Committee. And since April 28th, which was all the, uh, the new committee assignments, uh, out of 17 meetings, um, Mr. Bagdala has made six. In other words, he missed 11. That's 35%. And uh, Mr. Ruffalo only attended four, missing 13. That's 24%. Now, that's, that's getting into Steve Casey uh, <laughs> percentages. Yep, yep. Now, I point out to you, since, since July, um, uh, Mr. Bagdala hasn't made one, and Mr. Ruffalo... I'm sorry, Mr. Bagdala made one. Mr. Ruffalo hasn't made any. Now we're getting to .08. Now we're getting to my numbers. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, you know what? If you're worried hmm. about... Uh, and so, you know, this brings up a, a, a very interesting question. If you're elected to serve, and I understand, as everybody does, you might have a conflict with a, a committee meeting or something, but just blatantly not showing up for four months... Do we know that that's what this, what this is? I mean, it, it does I've, seem to be a long, peri- extended period of time of absence. Well, it's a pattern of behavior. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. And, and so I think what uh, I'm, I, I'm making a suggestion that somebody either, you know, if you're not going to serve like you're elected to do, then either, you know, resign and get out or uh, make an ordinance because they make ordinances on silly string and everything else under the sun. Why don't you make an ordinance that if a guy doesn't show up, uh, you dock his pay? Well, there's certainly an argument that can be made, just speaking in general, that you elect people uh, mm. to make meetings 
And, you know, if there is an unexcused absence, uh, obviously there are reasons for excused absences. Well, um, yeah. And we don't, I, I don't want to, I don't know the specifics of what's going well, on. All here, it says, but, all, you don't get a gold star. All it says in the minute. <laughs> yeah, min- <laughs> yeah, all it says in the min- in minute. You get an extra milk at lunch. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, if you, were, if you didn't show up here, would you get paid? Uh, or would somebody pay you not to show up? I would, well, <laughs> how much you got? Um, <laughs> No, I mean, you have to show up to work to get paid, or yeah. you well, take, you know, at, in a regular work situation, you get vacation time, which is your excused absences. Yeah. So yeah, it I'll seems be. to me that if that's a certain percentage, you go over it, you uh, you don't get paid. July, so. August, September, and October. Uh, anyway, if somebody's got a comment on that issue, give us a call, 262-694-1050. So you think the city council should take this up in a serious way? Should uh, what, what, what percentage would be acceptable to you? Well, let's say you're, you're going to do it. You get three excused absence okay. i mean that's just me i mean it's like a college i'll class. let them uh i'll let them decide for themselves what if, if they should even govern this uh good morning you're on kenosha today yo yes yo, yo. good morning this is, this is wally from down in tobin but okay that's okay Wally. When, when, when you talk about folks wanting a job they go begging for the job and then if you don't want to get or get off the pot I'm glad you didn't include the first phrase of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, but you're right. You're absolutely right. Whether it's in Illinois or here, or uh, if, if you don't if, want it, go. If, if, if you want to do your job, either get or give off the pot. You know, I got an email from uh, Governor Walker. Um, I guess it, was, it might have been. It said my name on it, but his number one goal over his next term is to ensure that everyone who wants a job can find a job. Well, that's... Okay, so if you get a job, show up, and then we'll pay you. But if you don't, then... Uh, now, what, what, what's your thought on if it's an elected official? Should you get a, a, a couple free passes, and then we start docking pay? Whether it be in Illinois hey, or anywhere. Yeah, that's a job you really begged for and begged for and begged for. Yeah, really. So, and then you don't show up for your job. Yeah, how about it? So then, uh, so then you want somebody to get something else again. Exactly. So are you running for alderman in Tobin? <laughs> uh, uh, if we had, if there was such a thing, yes. Yeah. Oh, what do they have? How do you get? How do you? How do they govern? Just by oh, any, seat of any, their pants? Any, any, any darn way they want. <laughs> well, that seems. To, that, when, that seems when, to work. When they want, if they want, and who pays them? All right, so it's generally the same system. <laughs> okay, we yeah. just got guys gotcha. in charge up yeah. here at Pretenders. Gotcha. All right, appreciate the call. Hey, that, that's a good thought. So, if anybody else has a question, should aldermen be paid? Or, or docked if they don't show up to meetings uh, after a certain point in time, 262-694-1050. Article in the paper today, looks like the weather, uh, Pete, is going to get a little chilly in the next week. Now, you got a pipeline to, because uh, WTMJ for weather, right? You're right, right. Storm team coverage, because it of comes course. directly. Yep. Now, I was watching Jesse Ritko uh, every day this week from <laughs> okay. 3 to 4. Uh-oh. The gal can't stand straight. And I understand she's, got a, she's with child, but my God. See, that's working on, on you know, take your take your talents outside the 17th mm-hmm. district and mm-hmm. see what you can work. Okay, well, I mean, let's let's make you uh, several months pregnant and see if you could stand up straight there, <laughs> Scotty. I'm just, I'm just saying. At about 3 in o'clock defense. in the afternoon, I ain't pregnant. <laughs> I have a little trouble with that issue. <laughs> in this article, it says Kenosha streets are prepared for another brutal winter with nearly 11,000 tons of salt and about 1,000 pounds of sand. And it said last year the city had a record 51 runs of salt trucks. Uh I guess it would be 200 if you count your tr- trips to the 17th. Of That's course, yes. Yeah. Yeah. When it was an inch in a, or, or a half an inch. So it says uh, we monitor the weather closely this time of this uh, Mr. John Project, who's the superintendent of streets, and says, when it gets here, we'll be ready to go. So not missing a beat. Uh, this is how we captured Pete. This guy made it to CNN this week in, in preparation for people getting signed up to be on standby for snow removal out the 17th district. Here's Pete. Yeah, we started at 94 and then... <laughs> started at the brat. <laughs> Are we going to do what they say can be done? Are we got a long way to go and a short time to get there. I'm eastbound just like no bandit run. <laughs> Petey the bandit. <laughs> Good morning, you're on Kenosha today. Good morning. Good morning. This is Paul from the scene. Paul from Racine. Okay, go I ahead. Was the gentleman who suggested the entrance music for the. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. How you doing? Good. I just want to let you know I'm working on it. Okay. But something like this, you know, requires a lot of thought. <laughs> Since it requires when? Requires a lot of input from people I know in the know. 
And so I will have something to you, I promise. Okay, you still have my so, email, right? So, but I have another suggestion. Okay. <laughs> we are coming up upon the Christmas season, right? That's what I understand. Okay, so how about after Thanksgiving, city council, every person on the city council has to serve in a live nativity set. Oh, boy. In swaddling clothes? Okay, I'll be the guy. I'll be the guy to ask because I've got to wash my hands already. Who's the Virgin Mary in the nativity Oh, my God, (laughs) Pete. See, Paul? i got to be the guy. I'll do it. This this will require some thought, but... Not I much. Think, I, I think, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. You got to. That's a very important role. We got, right. That is, that is true. We don't have right. a lot of three wise men down there. <laughs> uh, and they're all riding the trolley, not the camels. So we, how gotta do, be the animals. we got plenty of would-be kings, though, yeah. if you want to go that route. <laughs> right. but three of them, in fact. But, but don't you think that would be a good public service? Absolutely. And that's us. Yeah. We're, we're, in all, we're all into uh, public service. So you and still, how many... How many members are there again? Seven, Seventeen. Nations? Okay, so, you know, you figure five people for the nativity, three shifts, you know, <laughs> everybody take about, I don't know. Don't forget the donkeys. Hours. Hey, Paul, don't forget who's we got to have somebody play donkeys. Yeah, well, we got plenty of applicants <laughs> for that. <laughs> <spot>. <laughs> exactly. Throw in the mayor every once in a while. Oh, jeez. This is, uh, you still have my email, all right? <laughs> yes, I do. Okay. I, all right. I, I, I think, uh, you know, I will work on that, the entrance music, and okay. the various players in the nativity set. Well, don't, the live nativity set. Okay, don't put too much thought into this. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to have to send you back to therapy again. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> um, on a more serious note, oh, election no. results, what yeah. do you think? Mm-hmm. Thoughts? Well, what did you think? Forget what I think. I think, uh, uh, I think it was good for the state. Okay. I think that uh, there was a couple uh, instances, uh, a couple incidents. I think on the um, uh, on the vote on the uh, oh God, what am I thinking about? The advisory re- referendum taking the minimum wage up. Uh, do you think that that was? This was not my suggestion, but this was on one of those uh, fancy talk shows uh, where they actually get paid. But uh, do you think that raising the minimum wage was employed by the Democrats to get the minorities involved? And this, do, you, do you think that uh, Obama will give amnesty to 11 million uh, illegal immigrants? Yes and yes. For the same kind of reason? Yes. Okay. I, I, well, I, yeah, I think at this point, you know, he's pretty much shown he's going to do whatever the heck he wants. And yeah. um, <clears throat> who knows what the next two years holds. I, I think it's pretty safe to say it's going to be executive order and gridlock, but... Well, he can. There's. Uh, he can. Uh, he can waive uh, amnesty on his own. He doesn't need anybody's permission from right. I understand. Yeah, I believe you're right on that. Yeah. So if he does that, he's just put 11 million voters to the Democratic side. Is what it's been suggested. And if uh, the um, minimum wage gets passed, now this again, these were just advisories. But uh, right. You know what? What was what was interesting to me about the the referendum. As people voted in the affirmative to raise the minimum wage, affirmative over the Badger Care money. Yes, that's and, the other one. I and the third one was mm. the transportation fund, which was you know both mm. parties were all about. Um, so even as Scott Walker and Paul Ryan did very well in Kenosha County, those same voters had to vote yes on raising the minimum wage. Those two things don't seem to go together, uh, you know, because that's not a policy Scott Walker would be for is raising the minimum wage. It's interesting mm. that people would vote for him. <clears throat> and say, yeah, raise the minimum wage as well. Hey, Paul, I got one well, last question for you. In Oregon and Washington, D.C., the voters uh, okayed the use of marijuana by adults. Um, also, so Oregon will be joining Colorado and Washington State. And I hate to, I'm going to make the announcement now that we're moving our show to one of those states. <laughs> <laughs> so you might want to call a different number next week. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. I'll look forward to your responses. Super. All right. Thanks. thanks guys. All right. Bye. Good morning, you're on Kenosha Today. You know, you guys are kind of boring without me. First time caller? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, last time caller. <laughs> hey, uh, by the way, Mr. Last Time Caller, uh, we had our one-year anniversary, and we all went to the big uh, boat, to the boathouse and th- to the post, yeah, where were you? post-production uh, no, meeting. No, wait a minute. I was a little confused because I was at the broad stop. Well, here's what you missed. You ready, Pete? I'm ready. Here's. Red Solo Cup. I fill you up. Let's have a party. Let's 
let's have a party. I love you, Red Solo Cup. <laughs> well, I got to tell you, I was I was having my own little party Saturday afternoon. So yeah, well, yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks, thanks. You know what? Yeah, uh, I just I just I just climbed in the car. I had I have a couple of things I have to do today for different families, which is why I'm not there. Okay. But apparently, I'm not the only one with lousy attendance records. Did you talk about that already, yeah, Mr. Carter? Yeah. You know, uh, I said that the Bagdala, out of 17 meetings, uh, attended only six. Uh, Mr. Levin, thirty. Yeah, that. yeah, just committee just uh, committee meetings. Uh, yeah, and so he had a thirty-five percent uh, attendance, and Mr. Ruffalo had a twenty-four percent attendance. So this is getting into your numbers. Well, I got to tell you, uh, it, it, and those are two of the guys that uh, had always criticized me for missing meetings, and now they're with committee meetings. At least they they got an attendance record lower than I ever have. So. There's a little poetic, poetic justice. Stick that in your pipe and smoke. Oh, boy. Wow. Yeah. 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 Hey, uh, well, anyways, uh, okay. I forgot. I had to call in because I was very concerned. Uh, you and I missed a little bit this week. Sometimes I left messages and then you got back to me. And I just wanted to make sure that you uh, did what you're supposed to do every Saturday morning. So I'll ask the question again. Did you write the check? Okay. Hold on one second, Ryan. Scott, oh, great one of radio See, and television. <laughs> See, that's Did the you com- write the check for our radio show today? See, Stevie, it's got to come from within. <laughs> you know what i got to tell you? Uh, when I come back next week, I've got so much to talk about, I can't hardly Hey, but it. you know, I was thinking, after doing this every week for an entire year, uh, you think we should go back and just back off? And, and uh, we got 300 people in the studio here, right, Pete? That's right, Scott. Uh, well, show of hands. Okay. Uh, uh, I guess, uh, okay, Pete, you got your water ready? Uh, I'm ready. All right, this is one. I'm already uh, in trouble today. This so is uh, what the good, what the, it doesn't get any better. I can't find anything better. Here, but here's what the guy uh, told the good folks here at Dippity Doo. Uh, Digi, 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 thank you. Uh, one year ago when he didn't pay his bill. It doesn't get any better than this. Back by popular demand. <laughs> the <laughs> this week in the top ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could be Lou Organi. <laughs> Jeez, our phones are lighting up here. Our phones are lighting up. Hey, I just wanted to tell you, uh, we've got the polar vortex coming back down. Yep, so yep. everybody, I've been working with uh, the the Acme <laughs> Shovel Company from uh, Portland, uh, Portland, Wisconsin, and they are shipping down to the 17th District as we speak uh, three dozen uh, stainless steel uh, shovels with uh, heated handles, and we're going to be positioning them throughout the major intersections in the Whitecaps neighborhood <laughs> so that if anybody uh, is uh, out there and stranded, they're going to be able to, before my crew of volunteers get there, we're okay. going to be able to, you know, they're going to be able to start shoveling themselves out. But it's going to get cold, the snow's coming, but fear not, okay. my friends in the 17th District, even though your alderman only attends 24% of your <laughs> Committee meetings. Speaking of shoveling I will it, help you 100% <laughs> of the time, I guarantee it. Well, you know, we, can we we get those shovels? Mm. We're going to stage everything at the brat, and then we're going to we're going to travel in uh, yeah. like like this style. He's found it down, load it up and truck it. Yeah. Are we do what Make the brat stop. All right. Speaking of shoveling, we got to go, big boy. I'll see you next week. Talk to you next uh, week. All right. Good morning on Kenosha today. Morning, it's Scott calling with a 90 plus percentile attendance in two and a half years serving on seven different committees for the city of Kenosha. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> what a build up the act, Pete. Oh my God, 90%. <laughs> hey, um, your thought, if you want to, should uh, you guys create an ordinance? You create an ordinance for everything else. You no, know, I don't know about that, but I think ultimately the voters will have the final decision in 2016. Okay. People, I mean, if if uh, an alderman committee or an opponent wants to exploit that, I think that's fair game. Oh my God! Don't yeah. Uh, I just I just think that's fair game. I mean, you know, our city unfortunately has a history of people trying to exploit things that aren't quite accurate and uh, want to do it in goon style, Chicago style politics, and that just doesn't resonate well with the voters. Uh, that's probably why I'm sitting here for another term. But um, you know, it's just just the way I feel about the voters will have the decision, but. The reason I called today is I, I just want to advise everybody. I'm on my way over to uh, the Time Warner parking lot across from the Big Star where County Board Supervisor Ed Kabicki yeah. is holding his annual food drive to benefit the Shalom Center. Okay. And he'll be there until 2 o'clock. And I'm going over with about five bags of food uh, to head over there. I'm going to encourage everybody to stop by and say hi to Ed. And, it, you said you're going to the Time Warner parking lot, right? That is right. You, yeah, you, right. You, you can, can the van you, out there right across from the you, you, uh, you can use my parking spot. 
Thank you. Sir. It's kind well, of it's be, it's back way, around I the alley. It's behind Whatever the alley. Is your work. <laughs> it's the one with the job. knocked over light. All right, pole. it's the one next to the dumpster. Yeah, yeah. next to the dumpster. <laughs> light pole. We're in it. Yeah. All right, Mr. Gordon. Thank you for calling. Have a great day. Okay, Gary. you too. Bye bye. Good morning, you're on Kenosha today. Hey, uh, how are you guys doing? Good. Who's this? Uh, this is Dale from Kenosha. Okay, Dale. What's up? I'm just calling to let you know that uh, that. I, when I was at the 17th district last Sunday doing the uh, proper technique of shoveling snow. Oh yeah, how'd that go? It went. It went well. There was only one person that was having trouble catching on, but he was the alderman. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> From way downtown, he actually made so, the music. I mean, the music I made the music. Come back because uh, we have a late game tomorrow. I told him I'd come back tomorrow and help him out with it. Who oh, aren't you a sweetheart? But uh, on a more serious note, though. I mean, so I'm mean, really serious. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's supposed to be a motorcade or something tomorrow for uh, Jim Van Bandigam. Yeah, you know, I had the. Uh, it's not tomorrow, is it? Well, I know it's that the, be on, the, on Memorial Day, or, yeah, the ceremony is on Veterans Day Veterans Tuesday, Day, yes. but I, right, I've been but hearing I about it. There is a motorcade coming into, uh, like, Proco uh, tomorrow. They, I heard something, uh, Lenny talking about it. Uh, you know, I, I'm sorry I mentioned his name on your yeah. show. But. <laughs> um, <laughs> Larry? Yeah. <laughs> but it, Larry, it was in the Larry, paper. Yeah, Larry, that Larry. Yeah, guy. It was in the paper, and I cut out the um, times and places for Veterans Day, uh, uh, what you call it, but uh, I, I didn't cut that out. So it's, it's in the Kenosha paper today uh, when okay. that well, uh, motorcade yeah, is going to Yeah, I know. I kind of read through it, but I thought there, you know, it's Larry not. mentioned something that there was supposed to be some big thing. You know, going on tomorrow about it, and you know, we, we chastise Shirley for calling in and talking about other talk shows. Yeah, <laughs> so you, you don't want you don't want to get on I'm our bad sorry, side, I don't do you? Want to fall into that <laughs> yeah, you don't I, want to get I, on I our bad it. side. Hey, so when's the next meeting out in the seventeenth? You got another one planned for this? Uh... Um, well, like I said, I've got that special class going tomorrow with okay. uh, the Alderman. <laughs> okay. <laughs> After that, I'm not sure. Uh, I think we have pretty much everything under control. Uh, I. Did order some uh, salt uh, for all the residences. Uh, oh wait, that was table salt. That oh, might not okay. work very well. Well, that can work on our roadkill. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah. get over to 104th Avenue. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna. We need some flavor for the roadkill that flavor. Pete's uh, <laughs> gonna be frying up on 104th Avenue. So, well, I'm glad that you're all, all on top of this, and we'll uh, call. Well, us you know, and and like I say, you know, I mean, any help uh, they need out there, all they have to do is call me. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you don't want to publish your number, do you? No. Five, five, five. I'm not that interested. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, no. Dale, thanks for the call. Have a great All day. All right, good morning. You're on Kenosha Today. Yep, now you do it. Yeah. Come on. We, we have one? Yep. Okay, good morning. You're on Kenosha Today. Hey. Hey. It's Randy from Summers. Okay, Randy from Summers. How you guys? All right. How you guys doing? Oh, fine. You just called to see how we're doing? Pete, how you doing? No, I'm doing. I wanted to know if you guys <laughs> went to the lighting up with Shirley last night. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it'll be lighting it up with Shirley already. Uh, no, I missed it. I had. Um, yeah, me too. What were you so doing I on a Friday stopped. night? Want to know if it was a good turnout, whatever. Well, we actually, Scott has his own events, you know. Yes, uh, Friday afternoons. I'm a pretty busy guy. It's called uh, Strap It Down with Scotty. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, hey, slam are down. you going to be joining our, our <laughs> slamming them down with Scotty? Slamming them down with Scotty. Are you going to be joining our encounter group to help people? I know you're in Summers, but uh, since there's uh, I don't know, an agreement there, are you going to help us shovel out people of the 17th District in case that we I, get that half inch of snow I, out there? I would like to. Do you know how to use a snow shovel? Absolutely. Well, what am I thinking? You're from I've Summers. Snow <laughs> sho- I've got a couple of snow shovels. I've got a kick butt snow blower. Just got a brand new one last year. It's uh, it's a monster. If you uh, if that would help at all. Well, that sounds really good, there, partner. <laughs> you got a monster kick butt snowblower. How do you think of that? Oh yeah, it's a it's a <laughs> it's a uh, seven oh, feet. Jesus. It's a six forward, <laughs> one reverse. That's way um, too much. I, uh, it's a two hundred and eight cc overhead valve. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you're still on your way back from Woodstock, right? <laughs> 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 All right, uh, Larry, was it? Randy. Randy, yeah. Randy, yeah. Okay, well, uh, we got to run, but I uh, appreciate. That's okay. Oh, we'll... I enjoy your show. Okay. Oh, oh, 
Back to therapy, right. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, Randy. Anyway. I have, uh, Scott, I have an update on the motorcade tomorrow, just if you want to get oh, the okay. information out there. And yes. Actually, it'll be going on as this replay Sunday afternoon. It's going to be about 12.45 p.m. Uh, the motorcade, they, that's when they expect to get mm-hmm. back uh, to Kenosha. They'll be exiting I-94 at 158, traveling eastbound on 158 to Green Bay Road, then south on Green Bay Road to 60th, 60th to Proco Funeral Home. Oh, okay. And they want people to be along the motorcade. Uh, all the way through that route. So about 1245 okay. from 94 to Proco down 158 Green Bay Road and 6. Show up. It is, uh, exactly. It's a, for a very, uh, you know, it's hard to believe that after 47 years they finally uh, found him. But, you know, bring him home to town and give him a, a you know, homecoming like he deserves. All right. <clears throat> Jeez, we didn't even get to read sponsors yet. Uh, we're going to come back. We're going to take a quick minute break. Is this the weather by our, re- uh, our storm team coverage? Uh, Michael Fish will be oh, okay. uh, doing our weather. I, I don't know him. But when we get when we get, <laughs> he better he stand stands straight. up straight. Yeah. He does, yes. After There's we get back, time. we will have uh, something we don't do often here is the top 10 excuses Alderman uh, can use to miss a meeting. I mean, I don't know what there's excuses here, but we've got some bona fide reasons here, so we'll be right back. Good morning, Kenosha. If you just tuned in, this is Uncle Scotty Barter, and welcome to the Kenosha Day Weekend Report, coming to you live from Studio A here at WLIP AM 1050 on your dial. Little Stevie Casey is away on assignment this morning, but joining us in our Kenosha Today Trolley Barn, our video coordinator and our nominee for Trolley Driver of the Year, Captain Ronnie Muttersbuck, is here at Camp Happy Face. And engineering this morning's uh, train wreck, you all know, just can't say enough about uh, the heroic efforts he's done out in the 17th District and throughout the city. The voice of WLIP, the Honorable Pistol Pete Sergeant. Honorable. Get her down. <laughs> Dis. <laughs> Dis. Get her down. In parentheses. Yeah. Get her down. Get her down. If you uh, tuned, just tuned in this, or, uh, and missed it, the topic uh, um, that we started th- today is um, a couple of aldermen, uh, the 17th, Bagdala, and the 4th, uh, Ruffalo, uh, had... A less than stellar um, per attendance at uh, their committee meetings on the uh, license and permit, and uh, you know that the license and permit is one of the more important committees because everything seems it's like the backbone. If you want a taxi cab license, a bar license, or a restaurant license, or any kind of oh, it's a majority uh, of an agenda oh, at any yeah. city council, and it all goes through licensing and permits. And sure. so, uh, Mr. Bogdala only made thirty-five uh, percent, and Mr. Ruffalo only made twenty-four percent. Of the meetings, but you know what? It's all it says in the minutes is there was absent. But if there's going to be an ordinance that they're going to allow some people uh, before they start maybe dock and pay, uh, this was written in our home office on the deck of the boathouse pub and eatery uh, this morning. Top ten category. These are the top ten legitimate excuses aldermen can use to miss a meeting. Okay. I mean, everybody can m- miss one here and there, mm-hmm. but these these are uh, the top ten uh, legit number ten. Trolley driver forgot that there's a stop sign in front of City Hall. <laughs> can't can't you remember the route, right? Uh, number nine, the liquor and pills haven't completely worn off. Oh. You know, you just you just can't go to a meeting uh, oh. all jacked up on all jacked up on Vicodin what? and Kettle One. I mean, you got to let that wear down a little bit. <laughs> number eight, the alderman actually lost in the last last election. You know, if you lose the election, you don't have to go to these. That's a legitimate because there was an alderman. Uh, I think the well, there's a couple runners up that still yeah. go to every meeting. <laughs> That's right. Number uh, seven, you have to polish the fire hydrants over at the new doggy park. Now, that's a legitimate reason. <laughs> that you, is. You got to put very, it over there. Very important. Number six, claims to be working on a master plan with Monica Lewinsky. I think uh, <laughs> I want to maybe go into that one. Number uh, five, took a wrong turn on the way back from Woodstock. That's that's my excuse yep, I, yeah, if I was in a little bit. Still there. I'm still there, yeah. <laughs> Number four, uh, they were being interviewed on WIP in that coveted 4 a.m. time slot. <laughs> you know, everybody <laughs> tunes into that, right? Uh, number three. You had to run to the store to get some more super glue. That's a perfectly legit. <laughs> that's a perfectly legit reason. <laughs> number two, too busy signing up for de- Wi-Fi underneath the 50th Street Bridge. And the number one excuse an alderman can use to miss a meeting: signing up for Pistol Pete's Get Her Done Convoy to the 17th District. Yeah. yeah. Are we gonna do what they say can be done? We've got a long way to go and a short time to get there. Like Petey the Bandit. <laughs> Boy, that's, you know, we don't even rehearse that. No. <laughs> Which is, well, now you're going to help it anyway. It would it would lose its edge. Yeah, like really would. Good morning, gentlemen. <laughs> Did you call the right number? <laughs> Certainly, Scott. Oh, okay, Paul. <laughs> What's um, up? You know, we, we're all giving a lot of love to the 17th District and their fine aldermen. Yes. But I, just because the guy couldn't pull off a second term, 
we can't forget about old number eight and his cause. I think Pete knows what I'm talking about. I mean, from his fine lip off show. Nah, that yes, yeah. Oh, the guy that the guy that had this time slot. <laughs> no, no, Not, no. That would be number 13. eight. Number eight. Number eight. Who am I missing? Kate what about the M. Kenosha, the Kennedy Drive? It's still open. Oh, oh, yes, that that, <laughs> that guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, I just, I'm just doing time. Kind of, he is kind of forgettable in Scott's defense. The, the, I mean. You should have seen your Paul look like the deer in the headlights there. I had no <laughs> idea. What the eighth was. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Absolutely right. We were too focused on the 17th, and we have to expand our operations to the 8th district. And, well, you uh, remember uh, that uh, the um, Kennedy Park Drive took, some, took a beating last week, and it was windy. I think it was Friday. Yeah. And by what? Not Saturday. I think they were already saying... Uh, that the city had closed it permanently because of all the debris on the road, and it was open by Tuesday afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> there was no conspiracy. There was no nothing. Um, it just took a couple of days to clean and it, it up. Seems, you know, the same skill set for shoveling is for sweeping. So we could have you know <laughs> deploy some of the workers when they're not shoveling to go down to the lakefront and sweep away some of the rocks and debris. Uh, Paul, now you're talking about trolley driver's ability. Uh, you got, they got, a guy's got to memorize the route. He's got to learn how to use a snow shovel, and then he's got to learn how to be a sweeper. That's three and one. I don't know. Maybe you run a trolley from the 17th district down to the Kennedy Drive. Yeah, well, what's, the, an, what's another 60 million? Yeah, yeah, put a plow, put a plow on it. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah, we're just, we're thinking outside the box. Yeah. <laughs> we got this. We, we're all over this. Oh, okay, guys. <laughs> all Thank right, you, Paul, Paul, thanks. Bye. Good morning on Kenosha Today. It's Brandon Kenosha. Who? Brandon and Kenosha. Okay, Brandon, what's up? Uh, the same guy that was the, the same uh, former alderman was also complaining about uh, the money that was allocated. I think, again, Pete knows what I'm talking about. There was an advertisement going around that uh, was like a targeted hit list of, well, it was your alderman voting to waste city money on the uh, trolley. And uh, there's nothing like going to one of these meetings and just seeing who's still trying to stir the pot after uh well, see, so I wasn't in my top ten list. Uh, an alderman actually lost in the election, last election. That wasn't too far off, was it? That's a legitimate excuse. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm actually calling because I tuned in just as you're reading that list. What? Uh, how long did that take to formulate? About ten minutes? <laughs> Not even. <laughs> so, Pete and I were talking about. Somebody told me this week. Uh, who, you know, how long does it take you to write this stuff? This stuff's right there in front of us. I mean, I don't even. I'll, I, I just pick up the paper, and some of this stuff is there. Uh, did you hear all ten? Yeah, I did. Oh, okay. Uh, except the third. No, no, I didn't. I think I, I tuned in at number eight. Okay. Oh, the, number the, number eight was a good one. Yeah. I think. yeah. N- number 10, because you didn't hear the trolley driver forgot there's a stop sign in front of City Hall. I mean, that's a legitimate <laughs> excuse. And number nine, the liquor and pills haven't completely worn <laughs> off. Yeah, you just can't go all jacked up on uh, Vicodin and Kettle One <laughs> yeah. to a meeting. I would have said Bacardi and something else. But you are. Uh, <laughs> You missed the caller earlier. <laughs> hey, let me ask you. Oh, you say I was going to say, he missed the caller earlier that wanted uh, the aldermen to be in their own nativity scene. Oh, yeah. And I was trying to set people in different roles, which really <laughs> brought us to an awkward place, Brandon, I have to say. Hey, what, what, is, your, what, is, your, <laughs> what is your position? Do you think if an alderman, uh, they give them a few, uh, whether committee meetings or um, city council meetings, you get a few excused absences. But after that, should we, uh, should we uh, start dock and pay? What are the... Uh uh, you're, you're speaking of Alderman Bogdala, and I'm, I'm guessing G. John Ruffalo. Yeah, that was, it was. Yeah, we got their. Uh, their for, um, well, what are the attendance rates? Okay, for Bogdala. Now, this is since the new council. Uh, this is at license and permit. Since April 28th, there were 17 meetings. Bogdala attended 35 percent. He attended six, missed 11, and Mr. Ruffalo attended four, missed 13 for 24 percent. Since since July. Uh, Mr. Ruffle hasn't attended anything, and uh, Mr. Uh, Bagdala attended one. So, I mean, is this a is this a pattern of behavior here, or do you think this is just are, are they lashing out or cry for help? What do you think? I think uh, I think if you're not doing the job, you're getting paid to do on the public dime, then yeah. you're out. I Sorry, do. boys. I uh, I have my own opinions about those particular aldermen from the last uh, the last council that convened for the election. But uh, I'd say it's kind of a cry for help. <laughs> Therapy would hey, well, be useless. It's, 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 let's face the facts. I mean, mm-hmm. they're, they're fine gentlemen outside of outside of city council, I'm sure. But uh, they're, they're, there's certain allies of theirs that were voted out. That now I think these two are finding themselves in a, in a lot less of a position to... It's all, uh, It seems that certain aldermen are, are... The ones that are not present the most are the ones that cry out the loudest. 
You're right. So Cry for Help wasn't too far off, was it? No, it wasn't. That's good. all I got, gentlemen. Have a good morning. I'll keep listening. Okay. Thank you, Brandon. All right. I was going to ask him about the, what he thought about the voters' use of marijuana, but uh, <laughs> hey, uh, <laughs> I think we should, you know, uh, Colorado today has a good <laughs> has a good ring to it. Woohoo! <laughs> Oh, jeez, Pete, he's well, chomping at the bit all morning long. <laughs> that. Hey, this was in the paper today. Uh, two more issues. You can call us at 262-694-1050. Uh, former uh, superintendent of schools, Michelle Hancock's got a new gig in town. That's a new position with Carthage College. And uh, I don't understand. We, we pay her 500000 to pay off her departure. But apparently since leaving the Unified, she launched an educational consulting organization. Uh, I don't know if this is true, Pete, if, if this... Came in off the uh, wire, but it says how to scam five hundred thousand uh, class one hundred one. Is that we actually have some tapes from that? Class. Oh, we do. All yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> Take notes. <laughs> Take them. Okay. Study. Hall. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, that's thought I'd bring that up. Anyone's got a comment on that? But you know this this issue of uh, the roof on the Southport Beach House just ain't going to go away. <laughs> oh, God. I mean, this was um, a voice of the people by Margaret Heller. Uh, apparently, the, according to the National Park Service, a slate roof should last 150 to 200 years. And that's what was on there, right? Yes. And uh, here's the issue. I, as I see it, they didn't keep the receipt. Our yeah. guarantees <laughs> our guarantees should have been covered under this thing. They didn't buy the extended warranty. I guess happened, not. No. And so now, when they bid this out, they're only going to replace half of it. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> what half? <laughs> I don't understand why that's this. Uh, uh, we we're talking about the uh, uh, what else? Is I don't. I don't understand the whole beach house hubbub anyway, because the same people who want one part of it fixed don't want the other part of it fixed. It seems to me if you're going to fix it, fix it. Hey, we were just, still just uh, fix it. Yeah, we had uh, yeah, Alderman fix. Rosenberg uh, call in last week, so and they had the we... dedication of the new doggy park, the Canine Corner, and we're still awaiting for. Um, I guess a permit on that because we're going to put our Kenosha State Fire Hydrant out there mm-hmm. along with the other ones. So called <laughs> Leakers, Leakers Hydrant or Leakers We Corner. actually have a picture of you giving a thumbs up that's going to go on one of the hydrants. Yeah. And my <laughs> yep. we, we number one. For that. Number yeah, one, right? Number one. You're number one, Mr. Buddy. Uh, <laughs> and then now that the election's over and Walker's in, uh, I guess many are thinking that uh, the casino is pretty much a foregone conclusion. Mm. I mean, he's going to wait till February. February and use all the times. If, he's, if he does nothing, if I understand this right, Pete, if he does nothing, nothing. it just goes to nothing. <clears throat> yes. And nothing I mean, and nothing he, is nothing. Boy, wouldn't he look like the strong decision maker for president then? <clears throat> yeah, really. You know what I mean? I mean? What are you going to do? Duck out uh, anytime there's a... Oh. A, it's a specter back, looking over my wings, shoulder. Yes. Watch your back. You have this feeling you know, when you're talking to somebody, there's somebody <laughs> looking over your shoulder, Feels like, like your mom or your an ex-wife or something. Oh, it's Patrick Giuliano. <laughs> 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 so anyway, uh, if you have another question, we got a few minutes left here. This uh, hour went pretty quick. Uh, there's some discussion if the band of the Black Watch is going to compete again. They've had a field show. They haven't had a field show for a good number of years. It's very costly. But, uh, you know, it's only for a select few, and it costs probably about $100,000 to, you know, your dedication to go out and learn a field drill. Mm-hmm. Um, is it good? Is it bad? Uh, a lot of people are saying, well, maybe not on, on the taxpayer's dollars. If you want to go out and raise the money, I guess, go ahead. Go mm-hmm. for it. But uh, it takes a lot of work to um, – it harkens me back when my days in the band. Uh, <laughs> Getting the band At, at Trumper High School. <laughs> and uh, they, they put me in a, uh, in a field drill. It was at the old Lakefront Stadium, and – I was a clarinet player, and I was a very bad clarinet player. I know you guys find that shocking, <laughs> but uh, I didn't. I didn't have the music on my little stand. Yeah, stand there. Yeah. I had go ten steps up, turn to the right. <laughs> <laughs> I, and I was, I'm, you know, I was years before my uh, fifty years before uh, I could have been trolley driver material. Yeah, <laughs> I mean I, that's how these guys learn around, right? You go hit hit the button, you go this way and that way. If you got a call, give us or got a call. If you got a question or a comment about the election, uh, I still think that Obama is going to. Uh, wave the wand and give 11 million uh, illegal immigrants, you know, citizenship. Now, apparently, if they if he gives them citizenship, does that give them the right to vote? Well, amnesty is, that... is not the same as citizenship. Yeah, right. It okay. just means that they can come out of the shadows and get registered. Now, what the controversy is is okay. that does that put you on a pathway to citizenship eventually? So uh, that that's really the question. Some people want okay amnesty, but 
<clears throat> you, you know, you have to go to the back of the line to become a citizen. Well, I think it's everybody's uh, opinion. It, it was explained to me that it was a democratic ploy, so to speak, to put 11 million people more that's going to vote in the, in the uh, presidential election. And now all of this is going to, uh, I think you're going to see a lot of posturing on who's going to be the Republican candidate, uh, who's going to be the Democrat candidate. Uh, everybody keeps talking about Hillary. I don't know. Hillary is just a little old and not the best looking woman in the world. <laughs> a little on the chunky side. <laughs> <laughs> Enough about Hillary. <laughs> Steve, bring your own microphone next to yeah. No, I think he's going to have Scott's microphone next to yeah, 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 yeah. And then uh, on the Republican side, there's former senator out of Florida, Marco Rubio. And uh, it's going to be interesting how, I guess, we get to the early part of this year and people are going to start going. But uh, And then the, uh, the big question of the um, raising the minimum wage from 725 to 1010. And this was just a, an advisory referendum. And Walker says he wasn't going to, I don't care what the people said. I, I think I read that in a quote. He says he's not going to raise it. Or mm-hmm. That's raise what it. was so odd about yeah. it is people said you voted it. for Walker and said yes to raising the minimum wage. Those two things seem to conflict. Right? Conflict, although there is a strain of thought that says they would pay attention to that kind mm-hmm. of a you know a question on a ballot. But um, and then the, I don't think it's Walker's going to do that. The big issue of uh, Silver Lake being dissolved. Boy, they've had some real problems out there uh, between fire department, and police departments, and and uh, doesn't seem like those. People play very well in the sandbox together. Imagine if this was Silver Lake today, the material. Oh, <laughs> we'd have to have a four-hour set. <laughs> we'd, uh, we couldn't get away. Uh, and uh, then I tell you what, small-town politics is very... Oh. It's more cutthroat than big city politics sometimes. You know, it's, now that now that uh, the Republicans hold the, the edge in, in the legislature here in the state, I, I wonder what they're going to do. Uh, they got any, uh, any big plans to... To do anything that you know of, Pete? Now, if you follow that Walker wants to run for president, it seems to me that he would want to avoid what he had in 2011. Uh, mm-hmm. And so maybe you try to do more of a middle-of-the-road type policy. But um, I know that a lot of his opponents fear for the worst, but I, I don't see him doing very much, or any Republican doing very much in two years, because there's another election. and People, I, uh, have, uh, people will remember over that time. I have his email, so if you want to get a hold of the guy oh, and get do. him down here to join your uh, your uh, Congo line. He's found yeah. down we could always use a, one more hand. What better ad for what better ad for a governor gonna run for president <laughs> than roll up your sleeves and get out and do some snow shoveling. And then he can bring down his uh, Barbecue apron, get on the one on Fourth Avenue, fry a little of the roadkill out there, and <laughs> rake a little leaves. And then, of course, uh, I thought we were going to have a um, a uh, referendum in Wisconsin about the use of marijuana. That never appeared. I don't think that's going to happen. D- the referendum, or that it passed. E- e- either way, you have a Republican government. It's probably not on their uh, on the front burner, so so to uh, speak. Well, then we're going to have to move. we have to seriously think of saddling up and. And saddling up and going to Colorado. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Steve, bring your own microphone. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I think it's going to be a way. You know what? That's going to be. I don't think that'll be a presidential issue. I'll, I, cause, although it'll be asked at a forum, I'm sure. I'm sure it will be. I, I don't see many candidates getting much leverage out of it in a presidential race. But as a state by state thing, uh, you know, uh, it, it, it passes more than it fails. Now, it suppose, suppose uh, hypo- hypothetically that Wisconsin. Uh, approved the use of mar- 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 uh, marijuana. Ba- 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 ba. Mm-hmm. Um, that wouldn't allow us to use any more or any less. <laughs> I'm just, hypothetically, I'm just hypothetically, saying. Hypothetically, of course. Yeah. Uh, ah, on that a, note. Uh, special thanks to the Boathouse Pub and Eatery, House of Gerhard, Casey Family Options, uh, Charlie's Kids Foundation, KRS Painting, Lee Plumbing, Electrical and Heating Cooling, The Brad Stop, Kenosha for Open Honest Government, Small Business Technology Solutions, And that is going to wrap it up for us here on this morning from the corner of Happy and What Went Very Wrong. We thank all our sponsors and listeners for participating. Just a reminder, tune in to Channel 14 Wednesdays at 6.30, 9 p.m. Also on Sundays at 6 p.m. for our television broadcast of the Kenosha Today Show. Also on Sundays at noon right here on WLP AM 1050. You can listen to the replay of this show. And so from Studio A here at WLP, this has been... He's found a down.